After a weekend on the West Coast, the Texas Tech men's basketball team returned home with a trophy and another win for the record books. Coming up, MCTV's Pate Saxe has the details on Red Raiders' biggest win in the program history. Lubbock residents came together over the weekend to celebrate the life of a man whose legacy still lives on here on the South Plains and around the country. Find out more about this annual celebration next. And diversity has been discussed a lot recently on the Tech campus, especially following the events of Diversity Week. MCTV's Gina Rangnau has a look at a follow-up event that gave one Texas Tech group the chance to continue that discussion with students from around the country. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Aditya Sahasrabudey. And I'm Natasha Henry. Over the weekend, the Texas Tech men's basketball team achieved a historic milestone for the first time in program history. That's right, Natasha. The Red Raiders are headed to their first ever appearance in the NCAA men's Final Four. MCTV's Pate Saxe joins us now with a look at the Red Raiders' historic victory. Thanks, AD and Natasha. The Texas Tech Red Raider basketball team officially punched their ticket to Minneapolis on Saturday night. Tech took on Gonzaga in the Elite Eight round of the NCAA tournament. Unlike the Red Raiders' previous two games, the Zags kept the score close all the way to the end. But at the end of the night, Davide Moretti made four consecutive free throws to secure the win. Tech took home the victory 75-69 to and officially entered the Final Four. The Red Raiders returned to Lubbock early yesterday morning and were greeted by a huge crowd. Hundreds of fans came out to the United Supermarkets Arena around 2 a.m. to meet the Red Raiders' bus, caravan, and show their support for the team. Tech will leave town later this week to head to Minneapolis for a showdown with Michigan State on Saturday. Coming up later in sports, I'll take a full look back at the Red Raiders' run to the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. Back to you, Natasha. Thanks, Paige. Basketball may have been the biggest headline over the weekend, but it wasn't the only thing happening here in Lubbock. On Saturday, the 20th annual Caesar E. Chavez March and Celebration was held in North Lubbock. Starting at 1 p.m., attendees marched from the Buddy Holly Recreation Area to Cavazos Middle School to remember the civil rights leader. Cesar E. Chavez, the march, is held each spring to bring awareness to Chavez's mission, which was to fight for the right of migrant farm workers. The theme of our event is Courage Within, and so what we're displaying is that no matter what, we're always ready to step up and be courageous and handle issues that are not always the most popular. Saturday's march included representatives from various local groups, including several from Texas Tech. The 20th annual march wrapped up on Saturday at 3 p.m. The School of Arts galleries are often filled with exhibitions showcasing amazing works from the artists around the world. But right now, you can stop by and see one exhibit that is giving Texas Tech students the chance to shine. The 32nd Annual Jury Undergraduate Art Student Exhibition is currently on display in the Art Building Studio Gallery. The exhibit contains dozens of creations by undergraduate students who have been in art classes during the fall and spring semesters. The art on display includes paintings, sculptures, photos, jewelry, and more. Each of the pieces were exhibited in early March, and the final selections were put on display and opened to the public on March 23rd. Each of the works were judged by Rainey Knudsen, the founding editor of Glastire.com. Along with the final selections, Knudsen also chose a first, second, and third place winner of the exhibition, along with the several honorable mentions. The 32nd Annual Jury Undergraduate Art Student Exhibition is on display from now through Sunday. During the second to last week of March, Texas Tech hosted the annual Diversity Week celebration. And even though the official activities ended on Friday, a special summit was held over the following weekend that helped solidify the university's commitment to diversity on campus. MCTV's Gina Rang now has more. March 22nd through Sunday, March 24th. Texas Tech hosted the second annual Big 12 LGBTQIA Summit. Members and allies of the community gathered from around the United States to engage with acclaimed plenary speakers and one another. The topics discussed surround equality, inclusion, and the issues communities face at this time. It's a really good networking opportunity for people to build communities and start making change. Texas Tech established the Office of LGBTQIA in January of 2017. 
The office's mission is to serve the university's community through the facilitation and leadership of advocacy efforts. Texas Tech is currently the only school in the Big 12 Conference to have hosted a LGBTQIA summit and implement it as an annual event. The purpose of the summit is to get people involved. Um, so we have people from all over Texas and the United States. We have people from West Virginia University, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, University of Oklahoma, and you know all across the region. The three-day event included special performances, movie screenings, educational sessions, and peer workshops, all surrounding the overall theme of acceptance. The summit welcomes allies of the community who do not identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, or asexual to join and learn how they can take action in supporting the community. I think it gives an opportunity to give people who are outside of the spectrum or outside of the community or even people within the community to be educated on other aspects of the community. The Office of LGBTQIA also serves as a resource for members of the university who practice their allyship. Ally is someone that supports the LGBTQIA community without judgment, but also helps them to become their best self. Being an ally means standing in solidarity unconditionally. It is more than putting a magnet and a card um, you know, on display saying that you stand in solidarity, but it's rather a question of whether or not you act on those things unconditionally. Plans are already underway for next year's Big 12 LGBTQIA Summit. It will be taking place during Diversity Week. For MCTV, I'm Gina Rang now. The South Plains saw some big drops in temperature over the weekend as a cold front moved through early Saturday morning. That's right, AD. We saw highs go from 85 on Friday down to the low 50s on Saturday. And we're in for an even bigger change as the Category 6 hurricane will be affecting our area by Friday. MCTV's Madison Harden joins us in studio with a look at this week's forecast. Madison? Thanks guys. Well, April Fool's Texas Tech, there's no such thing as a Category 6 hurricane. And even if there was, it's not hurricane season and in case you haven't noticed, Lubbock doesn't have a coastline. So April Fool's, little joke from us to you. But looking at the real weather that we have in the area right now, we can see here from our tower cam that there is not a single cloud in the sky right now. The skies are big and blue and beautiful. Definitely get outside right now. Temperatures are going to shift a little bit later this week, but definitely get outside while you still can. It's beautiful right now. Our high for today is going to be around 63 degrees, sunny, warm conditions, and a southwesterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then for tonight, the temperature is going to drop back down to about 40 degrees and partly cloudy skies and cold conditions and a south by southwesterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now looking at our little corner of Texas as a whole, we can see that for most of this week, the temp high temperatures are going to be staying into about the upper 70s, lower 80s. So very temperate climate. We're not getting into the scorching heat of the summer yet. And then for our lows for the week, we can see that for the most part, except for with a few exceptions, our lows are going to be in about the mid 40s to upper 50s. So again, very temperate, no extreme weather, except for one day this week. And that, sorry, for Tuesday, we're going to be seeing highs around 77 degrees, a low of 48, and a south by southwesterly wind at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Now, that crazy day I was talking about is going to be Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be very breezy with a west by southwesterly wind at 25 to 35 miles per hour and a high temperature of 80 degrees, so our highest high of the week. And 24 degrees is our low, our lowest low of the week. So that's going to be a very interesting day. Definitely watch the weather at that time. But for Thursday, everything will have mellowed out again with a high of 75 de degrees and a low of 50 and an east by northeasterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So. A little bit weird there in the middle, but it looks like everything will mellow out again. And just in case you didn't hear that our joke at the beginning was an April Fool's joke, there is no Category 6 hurricane coming into the area. Please do not ransack the store for any canned goods. You are safe. It was just a little joke from us to you. Back to you. Thanks, Madison. As we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of creative students here on the Tech campus. And all this week, you have another chance to see that creativity in action during a set of unique performances. The 2019 Raider Reds One Play and Awesome Dance Spectacular is taking place from now through Saturday at the Creative Movement Studio. During the performances, attendees will have a chance to see original one-act plays and dance choreography, all created by Texas Tech students. Each performance will feature multiple works by graduate and undergraduate students in the School of Theater and Dance. All performances start at 7.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, along with a 2 p.m. matinee, followed by a final 7.30 p.m. performance on Saturday. For more information and to purchase tickets to any of the shows, visit theater.ttu.edu. 
Football season is still almost five months away, but that doesn't mean it's too early to start getting excited about the next season. With some big changes in coaching, many people were eager to get a first look at the state of the team heading into 2019, and they got their chance this weekend. MCTV's Paige Satchi joins us now with an early look at the Red Raiders in sports. Paige? Thanks, Natasha and AD. After a long offseason, Coach Matt Wells coached his first scrimmage as Texas Tech's head coach on Saturday. The first spring game of the year, Coach Wells was able to evaluate how the team stood after only having eight practices in offseason. Coach Wells said the defense looked great and the goals as far as offense and defense are very different but are still going to be continued to be, work, to be worked on. The Red Raiders completed 20 of 38 passes for 227 yards as a team with Colt Garrett finishing 8 for 10 for 140, 104 yards while Alan Bowman was 5 of 12 for 37 yards. Jet Duffy also went for 4 of 9 for 58 yards. The defense stood out most in the scrimmage. Adonis Brown had a pick six early on, running for a 52 yards into the end zone. Trey Gentry later forced a fumble in the end zone, causing a safety for the team. The football team continues their rounds of spring games in Midland on Friday and Frisco next week. The Lady Raiders softball team has been making a name for themselves around Texas Tech and the Big 12. The Lady Raiders clinched their first Big 12 Conference Series of the season against Iowa State, improving their record to 29-6 overall. Junior pitcher Missy Zoch and sophomore pitcher Aaron Edmondson closed out the win for the Lady Raiders with only four runs and finished the final inning in three strikeouts. The Lady Raiders return home to Rocky Johnson Field to host a four-game series with the Texas Longhorns this weekend. The number 10 Texas Tech baseball team clinched their first Big 12 series win of the season against Kansas State with a doubleheader on Saturday and the scores were 11-4 and 4-3. In their first game, the Red Raiders trailed 2-0 through the fourth inning. The Raiders scored in every inning after the fourth and ended the game with 11-4 win. In Game 2, junior left-handed pitcher Dane Haveman had a career high of three scoreless innings, and the Red Raiders brought out the closer freshman Clayton Better, who struck out three in the ninth for his fifth save of the season. Some other notables of the series, freshman Micah Dallas got his second start of the season, only allowing three runs in six frames. As far as hitting goes, Brian Klein went for four for seven with two doubles and five RBIs. Freshman Cole Stillwell compiled four hits and a pretty successful weekend for the Red Raider baseball team. Tech returns to midweek play tomorrow for a two-game series in Albuquerque against the New Mexico Lobos. First pitch is set for Tuesday at 7 p.m., followed by a 2 p.m. start on Wednesday, and you can follow the games on TexasTech.com. History was made this weekend with your Texas Tech basketball team. The Red Raiders are headed to the Final Four for the first time in school history. On Thursday, Texas Tech took on Michigan in Sweet 16 matchup. Jarrett Culver went for 22 points, with Davo De Moretti adding 15 points. Tariq Owens had a great defensive game with 10 rebounds to help lead the Red Raiders to a huge 63-44 win. The Red Raiders then went on to the Elite Eight matchup on Saturday with the tough number one Gonzaga. Gonzaga has a pretty regular name when it comes to March Madness Tournament, a nail-biter game up until the last second. Jarrett Culver with 19 points and 6 rebounds, Davide Moretti with some very crucial 3-pointers, and a top-notch defensive play by the team, earning a 75-69 win over Gonzaga to head on to Minneapolis. Next up, the Red Raiders will play Michigan State in the Final Four on Saturday at 7.49 p.m. And that's all for sports. Back to you, A.D. and Natasia. Thanks, Paige. So, A.D., did you have a chance to watch the Red Raiders beat Gonzaga on Saturday? I absolutely did. It was a tremendous game. And um, how about you? Oh, I was on the edge of my seat the whole entire time. Cool. That's amazing. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thank you so much for joining us. And be sure to check ttohub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday.